I had at least one person that made my day. Within the first two hours, they said, wow, you know, I was just about to upload a cover, and I went to the music policies, and I looked it up, and it's an issue. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, look at my options before I upload this. Thank you for sharing. And, I mean, mm -hmm. dude, like, that was my whole point. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, So even man. just, if it helped one person, that's what I matters. Know. I know that's right? what's awesome about. That's what I love about Matthew. He really is in it for the right reasons. Well, and his music is awesome. Listen to Melify. It's a great band. Thank honestly. you. I, thank I, I, you. The music is great. The lyrics is great. I've have always you heard my newer stuff? Albums. I have. I heard Pandemic, which I liked. Um, is that that's tuned down majorly? That make that's the thing with Matthew. He knows how to take something and create the mood with it. I think that's so important. You know, as soon as I heard that tuned down guitar, I was like, I'm in for a ride here. And then the lyrics were perfect and spot on. Um, but Melify, uh, just two great concept albums. Um, you know, it personally touched me because, you know, I teach about the ego and I teach about, you know, maybe there's something deeper than this person. You better check it out, not to believe anything, but take a look for yourself and see. And I think that's what you know, those albums uh, convey, and it's just a, st a great story, a great structure of the story. Oh, man, you should definitely listen to them. Plus the videos, I, that was what was cool because I had already had the albums, and then I went to your channel and you put up, like, videos uh, to, that you can just listen to, and that's awesome resource. So another thing uh, I'd like to do, and and this is this is something I've been toying around with. Remember, I was saying I'm going to record originals. So um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the easier ones first, like um, I Reach for You, like Higher Leaves, like um, the ones that uh, lend themselves to an acoustic performance easier, and the ones that don't uh, involve my wife having to be involved <laughs> because she's extremely busy uh, working as a massage therapist. Bless her heart. Um, and so, um, you know, what I was thinking is just make some videos of me singing the easier ones live, you know, um, and make it a video to post to YouTube. And then um, once I have, you know, I'll just one at a time to start replacing the little thumbnail videos that I made, you know, with the actual good videos. And then, you know, once I've done that 33 times, well, then I'll have a rock opera. Yep, exactly. And, that's a, and honestly, that's the number one thing for anybody that wants to use to YouTube to make any kind of money, like you were saying, monthly bills at least. Content, content, content. As soon as you stop posting stuff, the algorithm doesn't show your stuff in the search engine, period. Yeah. It's, there, there's a live element to it, meaning that there's a bunch of people who like to watch it and they're interested in what you're saying and they're waiting for the next one you know so well what about win -win. live streaming that's something we haven't really just talked about because like one thing that i've discovered and this is my opinion and my experiences with live streaming on youtube in particular um is that i have trouble getting the volume right whereas when i work on zoom i don't feel like it's as difficult now it's probably because i've done zoom probably about at least 50 times now and i've done youtube live streams maybe five times now but i just feel like the interface it's more difficult for me to control my input volume and so when i try to do a, like a live stream in concert i find like it's either distorted or too quiet and finding that sweet spot where it sounds right for me has been very difficult so i've been yeah. avoiding it but dude a lot of people that's how they've been doing their music is just live streaming on youtube i will also say before i pass it to the floor to you is that live streaming is more stressful to me than <laughs> doing a zoom meeting or even doing a, a recording um that's intended to be live because there's no chance for me to edit it at all like not even <laughs> a little bit and like dude like at first you know when i was doing my covers i was just doing all live all raw it was just like we were doing in, in jam and chat i was treating it like a gig so this was my microphone and then my laptop camera was my camera and that's it so i wasn't treating it like a recording session no other software no other effects if i couldn't make the sound live i didn't make it then people started commenting and they started saying, Matthew, you sound really good, but this is just a shadow of what you could sound like. Have you ever heard of a DAW? And I'm like, um, 
I'm a studio engineer. Of course I've heard of DAW. <laughs> and they're like, well, you know, if you just like make your audio and your video separate and then mash them together, you can sound way better. And I was like, great idea. Thank you. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of that since. But, but then I see other people and they put up that raw live cover. And it's just, it's different. It might not sound as good. But, dude, it's piercing. It's penetrating. That's true. You it's know, like I being, just... Being, and that's, that's the difference. Even between a recorded yoga class and a live yoga class, you have people... And actually, I think as a performer or a teacher, you get something from the room. And I don't even know how that works yet over online. You know, in, in a room where I'm teaching meditation or yoga or something like that, or even playing music, the audience is part of it. I mean, it's undeniable mm -hmm. if anybody's been a musician. And it's so different being alone. But then with the Zoom, there is this element. So I think it actually is possible, you know, from a distance. And um, so I think that is the difference. That's why I liked watching my friend do those covers on Facebook Live because they did have an audience, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's different than you just sitting in your living room jamming, you know? And... Um, so I think there's value to both personally, and I think both will improve. One thing I never will do again, probably over Zoom until they fix it, is call and response Kirtan because <laughs> no, when I listen to it, don't be so hard on yourself. Nah, nah, no, but I, this it is wasn't way even myself. I was hearing it in my headphones, and when I was doing the response, I was on, you know. And then yeah. as soon as I heard it on Zoom, it sounded like I was <laughs> the worst person ever vocally oh, because I was just no. like three beats off because I hated that. That's what I hated. That's what I think will improve though. I it was it at least a sixteenth note late if more like an eighth though. Yeah, it yeah, was late. It was probably it was at least an eighth. I would say an eighth. It was late. Yeah. I was like, wait, that does I'm like that I don't even want to listen to that. That scared me. And so you you get away f with some things on this, I think. I can't wait to hear what we did with the loop pedal and the last one and those kind of things. And that's something I'm learning and new, but to try to... I think to... we were slightly overfilling the sound spectrum a little bit. I think we just overall combined, especially, I think the loop might have been a teensy bit too loud, only because, like, with Jennifer and playing her saxophone, normally, I don't have trouble getting her to come out too much. Like, yeah. it was just me and her, or me and her and Eric. But, I mean, you're putting out, like, like oh, so much more volume because you're yeah, putting out not the only thing. the rhythm loop, but also the you, the leads you're playing on top of it. So Exactly. That's what I got to learn. I got to learn where the level is. That's what I was hoping with this session mm -hmm. to really get it down. And then maybe you could do a mastering music with how do you hook up your pedals to Zoom in an effective way. That's neat. And That's a good idea. You, would, you could do because it's so much better than having any feedback coming in through the mic. And plus with a looper pedal for jamming. I mean, every band I've ever been in, that's how we wrote a lot, you know, just with the looper pedal, just coming up with some idea and jamming on top of it for a while maybe, and then going without it, you know, and those kind of, I think it's just such a great tool, don't you? Think oh yeah, I, I have a lot of loop covers um, that like I was like treating it like a gig like I did before. Yeah. Um, I've done I a lot of us gigs. And them. Us and them, you did a great oh, job. Thanks. With the loop I love the that. hardest part about the loop covers is switching instruments fast enough to mm -hmm. where, I mean, like if it's a really long loop like us and them, it's not too hard. But some of the ones that have shorter loops, I know. then like if, I, if I'm not ready exactly by the time it repeats, then I have I to wait for it to repeat all the way over again. You just um, got to be really patient, I think. I, I just do it alone mostly, so I don't care. But probably, it is, like, it's a science on its own. Probably my single most popular loop cover is the Tears in Heaven one I did. Remember Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton? Oh, uh, yeah, Eric Clapton. Remember that? Man. Oh, the, that's an incredible well, song. Well, what I did was I sort of changed it a little bit. Instead of doing it finger style, you know, and um, I changed it to have swing 16th notes, like the other song Heaven by Lost Lonely Boys. You remember that? Right, yeah. Remember that? Oh, and it was like, ah! I know there's right it has that yeah. ch -ch 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 -ch. Mm -hmm. so I just took it and I was like mm -hmm. 
<laughs> oh man, it's weird playing a seven string. Anyway, the the point the point was, um, even if you just change a song just a little bit, you know, it yeah. can really it can really make a neat cover. And you know, I think a lot of times people like that. Just instead of hearing it exactly the same way you've always heard it, um, and that and sometimes I'll change stuff like I'll put a saxophone in it where there wasn't a saxophone like on that cheap trick song I covered there's all yeah. these really cool keyboards in it and mm -hmm. like the song just would not be cool the chorus yeah. without those keyboards yeah, and so exactly. I just played them on saxophone mm -hmm. you know what I, I mean know. that's that's the key that's what you got you can do any melody line with whatever instrument you want and that's that makes it really unique in my opinion my favorite cover album, I think, of all time is Johnny Cash's cover album, um, where he did, like, Soundgarden, he did Nine Inch Nails. Do you remember that album? Oh, my God. If you've never heard it, just that, to me, is the best way to take your original, as an original artist, and take somebody else's song and play it in such a unique way. I, I just love that album. Yeah, I can't I do. even remember the name of the album, but love it. Um, definitely uh, definitely yeah. it's really cool to take and put and put your own spin on stuff and you know it's it i'm so all about this, hmm? this jam and chat are you just going to cut it up into like half hour things because it's well it like, doesn't have to this will go forever right well be, when the the rule with the zoom basic account is if there's only two people it can go indefinitely yeah, as far as that's I know. what i remember yeah mm -hmm. right so, so cool um, but i mean you could chop it up but yeah. I could, uh, or or I could leave it long. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It doesn't really yeah. matter that much. Um, honestly, I usually air this whole one. Thirty three has been one long chat, which I miss, man. I'm not <laughs> complaining. I love it. I think it's amazing. I, I usually err on the side of less editing. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, you, but but one slice isn't bad. You could chop it in, and that's the attention span. Like if you if you, anything's longer than like an hour, nobody even looks at it. Like if you that's chop true. it up, that's what I think is good about your format with Jam and Chat. Even though if you do longer, you know, it's still in those half hour things where they can come back later and be like, okay, I'm going to watch another half hour while I have a coffee or something like that. You well, know? remember too, I have a free video editing program and literally, dude, if I have an hour and a half video and I want to chop out a 30 minute section of it, it'll probably take 20 minutes to render that video. Oh yeah, definitely. And then another 20 minutes to render the next part. And then another 20 minutes to render the yeah. next part. Sometimes and I just don't when have time I render, for that. Dude, if I render the yoga videos, it takes 28 hours to sometimes 32 hours to render. Holy crap. I mean, I have a ton of edits because I have five different camera angles, but um it's still a lot then i have music that i put underneath it i make i build a music track underneath it i have one cha one camera we bought a gopro and that's all i got yeah I, that's all right it's actually really good quality by the way yeah. your one camera is way better quality than all of my cameras well yeah. you know we um when when i got the pua i said to my wife honey i'm buying something <laughs> <laughs> So I bought, I bought a camera. <laughs> and that's what you, I mean, it's for your business, though. I mean, Exactly. Difference. Even on your videos, it makes a difference because I watched your beginning videos to the ones now. Mm -hmm. and it's a big difference in quality. Well, that's why I don't want to take down my beginning videos. One of the things that I realized is that, you know, people that have been watching me since I started have, have been, have, have, have liked to see my growth. And that's good. And that's why I'm leaving my old videos up. That's why it hurts me that they took down Desperado because that was one of my first videos. Yeah. I you know? You, man. However, however, at the same time, um, just, because, just showing my growth isn't enough. In order yeah. for me to be a successful teacher, I have to show how my teaching causes others to grow. And if yeah. I can do that, then that's when I'm going to see real success. And so... That's why this collaborative stuff is so important to the channel. You know, not only does it give that reactionary um, element that is so crucial in YouTube, but it also gives, um, you know, the, that collaborative effort, the ability to see other people learn and grow. Like, for example, I, don't, I, I only want to say beautiful things about Jennifer because she's been wonderful. She's helped me from the beginning of this. And, dude, like, 
since I've known her, <laughs> I've been trying to get her to just fucking play. And the F word applies. Just fucking play. And, you know, she, she used to be like, well, I have to have something to play. And then it was like, well, how do I do that? And now it's like, okay, I think I'm starting to get it. Yeah, you know I what her. I mean? I love her. I think she's such a great personality. Yeah, to just to just play, yeah, yeah. And I get I get probably a third of my students have that personality where they're like, okay, well, if you teach me exactly where to put my fingers and exactly what string to hit, exactly what time, then I can do it. But otherwise, I can't do anything. Yeah, exactly. Actually, you taught me that too with Kirtan because, as I mentioned, if people don't know what a harmonium is, it's kind of like an organ that you play with one hand. Mm -hmm. And like I spent my whole life learning the fretboard. And then suddenly I had to use this weird instrument, which is almost like an accordion on steroids. If you've ever seen one. And we, you know, Matthew and, you know, would usually take guitar rain or, or whatever, and, and his wife Becky would play bass. And then we had a percussionist, Chris, who else I, I wish he would come on here. I miss him so I've much. I've invited him, you know. Yeah, I think it'd be awesome. hard for him to get a good sound, honestly, unless he had some high-tech microphone. You would like, have to have the mics that I have right. for drums where you can clip them on the bottom of that djembe. But He'd anyway, certainly be welcome, man. Chris, yeah. is such, he's such a great personality, oh, too. Man. I miss it so much. Like, I can't tell. That's why I just love doing this, because just getting around you. We used to talk till 4 in the morning and just jam and it was awesome but anyway back to the harmonium <laughs> you know i didn't know the scales i didn't know the modes i don't you know i was always a guitar player but you know having matthew as a teacher and even in that time period just having somebody with that attitude like what you were talking about with jennifer was really really good for me because you know as we went on i would experiment more than just playing you know three tones in the chord or whatever or just droning something underneath and i did learn something i got to get back on there and learn more too i really do want to learn more but it forced me to say all right you put down this guitar that you know this instrument that you've been playing your whole life and try something new and then we're going to put you in, pub in front of public to do it <laughs> that was guitar for me that was guitar for me and and the reason why i got so focused on learning guitar and getting good at it is because i could do it while i sang see like saxophone's great it's like a voice but yeah, you can't love... sing mm -hmm. and play saxophone simultaneously um at least not with any kind of quality so you have to um you know, and, and honestly, the hardest thing for me... You can play the melody lines, that's it. Sure, really. You can't sure. do it at the same time, but... The hardest thing for me is switching instruments quickly enough. Yeah. You and know what I mean? Thing. I think that's when where we the doing loop pedal If you do the loop pedal, like, I've learned that you... Just take your time. Like, at first, you want to make it perfect, I think, as a musician. But what I've learned, and maybe it's just because I got older, just take your time. Let it play, like, bars and bars. Who cares? Until you're well, set up for the next thing. <laughs> no, you, you haven't been in the situation where I have, dude. I yeah, have, you're right. You're I right. have yeah. been where I'm, I'm doing a, a gig that I worked hard to earn. I had to impress the owner or the manager or whoever. I had to get my first booking i had to do well at my first booking i had right, to convince totally... them to give me a regular booking and mm -hmm. then after that every single time you play you're under the microscope they're constantly analyzing the numbers versus what people are saying about you and look i'm not in any way trying to be negative i'm trying to tell you my experience i hear you you man. know I'm open to it. if if one person says it's too loud that hurts you more than 10 people saying they like it <laughs> helps you okay it's always a complaint okay so so I, i'm never too loud mm -hmm. ever i yeah. i strive to, for them to ask me to turn it up yeah if they're asking me to turn it up that means they like it enough to where they're like hey you know we want to hear this easier that's yeah. what i strive for you yeah. know i want i want i don't want to be obtrusive to people's conversations when i'm playing i want to be better than the muzak or the radio station in the background and that's mm -hmm. hard to do especially by yourself especially as a solo goddamn exactly. hard to do but i can do it and i know yeah. how to do it i've had years and years and years and years and years and years of practice doing it so really the issue now you know 
is just getting the audience there has been the same issue I've had since I was a little kid. You know, and one of the hardest lessons I ever had was when I was a little kid. I was like 13, I remember. And my dad was trying to tell me, oh, you know, you got to do old people music because we're the ones with the money. Fast forward 30 years later, before I left Florida, my dad's telling me the same thing. And I was like, but dad, it's 30 years later. Now my <laughs> now I'm 41. I used to be 11 or whatever. Um, now isn't it my generation that has the money? Oh, no, your generation's dumb. They spend all their money. They haven't, they haven't saved their money like my generation has. You still need to keep playing for my generation. And I'm just like... You know, I think this is less about money and just more about what you want me to do. And, you know, it became kind of an issue. But at the same time, what I decided to do was meet, marry it. Do some of my originals, do some older stuff. Do some newer stuff, do a little bit of everything. Whatever I love, I do what I love. Exactly, yeah. That's it. Exactly. I love it, so I do it. And if I don't love it, I don't do it. I know, and that's my favorite thing to do. If it's a cover, I got to really feel it and love it. Mm -hmm. Um... Thank you very much. Please take a second and subscribe to my channel. Like this video, share it with all your friends, and leave your comments down below. And I'll see you guys next time on Matthew's Favorite Covers.